Hello everybody, my name is Shannon and you're watching Another Yarn. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about this book review. This is a book called a Fantastic Fantasy Dice Bags Crochet Patterns. This is by Heather Heisler. Uh, she is a YouTuber. She goes under Strings and Threads. This particular book has 19 patterns in it. These are uh, different dice bags. I bought this particular book myself. I got the Kindle version and I'll show some better pictures. I'll add those maybe to a split screen or something so you'll see half me and half of that afterwards. But I got the Kindle version and I absolutely love it. I purchased this on Amazon for $9.99. So if you're interested in it, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, you can also get her patterns on Etsy, buying them individually. Although if you were to buy or look at two or more that you really, really like, it's probably a better deal to get the Kindle version. Uh, the book does come in print form too, if you prefer to have a physical copy. So I just wanted to go over that. Uh, absolutely fun and fantastic. Uh, so the dice bags for the people who, um, I do have people who watch my channel who are visually impaired. So I'm going to try to do a little bit better job of describing what you're seeing too. So for those people, they can actually understand it a little more. So on the front cover, you've got the dragon. That's the first dice bag. And what that looks like is an animagurumi head, you know, like a stuffed animal head and a drawstring at the neck, right? So thought that was absolutely fantastic. So there are 19 patterns and the dragon is the first one. Well, of course I had to make some, I'm not going to just do the book review and not make something. So look at this. What do you think? Did I do good? All right. So this is a camouflage dragon with red eyes and the black stripe down the pupil of the eye. So the red eyes with the white irises, it does have horns and nostrils. Now I did deviate from the pattern a little bit. I followed the written words exactly, but the pattern calls for a worsted weight and an H hook. Um, I don't follow patterns 100% because they're suggestions, they're guidelines. I used, I think this one's a sport weight, but I used a size C hook. So it's a lot smaller than what it would look like if you were to use that worsted weight. Uh, this is fantastic. The camouflage color, I thought that was great. Uh, the only thing I need now is to maybe add some flames or something coming out of its mouth. Not part of the pattern, but it just looks to me like it should be a fire breathing dragon. And the other thing that I did differently, if you can look at this, you can see what that looks like. This is the twined cording on here. The pattern calls to do like a, um, a parachute, parachute cord or something like that and using toggles and I didn't have any of that. So I took some yarn instead of chaining, which is perfectly acceptable or any other type of cord, I took the yarn and I went like this and I twisted it and I twisted it and I kept doing like that. I had two strands and when it was so tight, just twisting like this, then I turned it on back on itself and I let it go. And you can see just that little bit, how that just twisted on itself. So you can imagine that with a longer strand and you can see what that does. So it's if you don't have the, the cording and you want something that looks more, I like to say it looks more polished. That's a good way to put it. You know, a little bit more polished for the ending. That's another object or another way that you can do that. So I did make this, this is the first dragon. Well, after making the first dragon, I looked through my stuff a little bit more, decided I wanted to make another one, so I did. So this is my second one. So this is this particular yarn. This is a fingering weight yarn. This is a, a Malabrigo fingering weight yarn. This was leftovers. I have two or three Ziploc bags of just leftover balls, bits, bobs, balls, and pieces from when I made socks or different projects. It was too much to toss. I don't want to toss it, but not enough to really do another pair of socks or something. So it was perfect for this. Um, so this is the, the deep, deep jewel tones. If you look closely at the eye right there, there's sparkle in that. So I used a sparkle yarn on the eye again, the white on the iris, and it still has the horns and the little nostrils. I did that same cording for this particular dragon. So that's the first pattern. The second pattern, we've got the turtle. I'm going to just go ahead and put pictures on the side instead of holding up the iPad. So the turtle was another one that I thought was really cute. And 
I made one. Oh, there it is. Huh. So again, I use scrap yarn for this. This was for me personally, just such a great use of scrap yarn. So this one right here for the people who are a little bit more visually impaired, it is the turtle and the bag itself is sitting up on the back of the turtle. So you've got that drawstring and you got the little face from the turtle. I did use safety eyes and see he's a little cockeyed on the head. So he looks like he's kind of got a quizzical look looking at you. Uh, I like the designer's use for the uh, making the hexagons as the turtle shell. And then you pull this closed. There you go. So that is a perfect little bag. Both my, um, my husband and my son were liking the turtle the best. I thought they'd like the dragon the best, but this is so cute. So that dark green, swampy green, and then uh, the uh, multicolored uh, browns right there. That green, I do know that that was a hand dyed yarn. I'm not sure. I think it's a... Uh, uh, by Nerd String. There you go. But uh, And then scrap for the underbelly of just like a cream color. So there's the turtle again with that nice cording since I didn't have the parachute cord. There you go. So that's the second pattern in the book. The third pattern is the dragon skull dice bag. So this one's white. This one has the dual pouch in it. So you have two places that you can put your dice or what have you. If you do this in the worsted weight, the way the pattern calls for, um, obviously it's going to turn out a lot larger than what you're seeing things that I've made. But um, depending on what you want to use for it, I can see instead of just the typical dice bag, I can see kids using these things, carrying them around as purses, satchels, and what have you. Um, I My intention for the turtle, I was going to put my stitch markers in there. You know, it's a cute little thing just to sit on the container, put my stitch markers in there, use the drawstring, and there you go. It's wonderful. But I think I lost out. I think that's going to go to my husband or my son for their tabletop game. The thumbnail for this video, that's, that's actually in our house. That's part of their tabletop game. The next pattern is a bonus dragon head pattern. So I thought this one was really neat. It has the um, big horns and everything going from the eyes, going all the way back. It's more like what I would think of maybe a Chinese dragon or, or something along that line. And I also like these designs. If you were in the mood to make an animal groomy or a stuffed animal, you don't have much more to go on this. You've got a head. You've got the really cool head on some of these bags. And then come up with whatever you're going to do for the body and have that as the stuffed critter or stuffed animal. Give that to your family, friends, kids, whatever. I thought that was fantastic. So the next one is the snake bag. Yeah, I made a snake too, right? So here's the snake that I did. And again, this is just scrap yarns. So it was, this whole book is so perfect to use for your scrap yarns. Isn't that fantastic? I did the same drawstring. I did add the little tongue to, to my snake looking down there. Uh, my son said it needed a tongue. So, you know, I added a tongue, right? And you got that drawstring and away you go. And this does hold enough of their dice and everything for their game. So it's not huge, but it does hold the, uh, the dice depending on which size that you have. There's plenty of space to do so. So that's kind of cute. Um, I can see you can put two cords on it or the one. You can just throw that on your wrist and go. If you wanted to make a thicker cord, by all means, you can do so. But I thought that was pretty good with, um, with what I had currently available. And these are all scrap yarn. So this whole book, perfect for your scrap yarn projects. The next pattern was the cereal bowl. How cool is that? You've got a bowl of cereal. So I made that one too. Yeah, I made four patterns out of this book. That's crazy. That book is well worth it. Man, that's worth my $10, right? So look at this. Isn't that cute? So you can see I made my bowl a stripe bowl because I had some striping sock yarn. And look at the bottom. Isn't that cool? That bright orange and the yellow with the circle on the bottom. There you go. There's the bowl. This kind of reminds me, I know it's the bowl of cereal, but it reminds me of like a fancy vase or something along that line. I did more like a berry cereal. If you look at it, I've got the red, the blue, and the purple sitting in the milk. Now, I did change this pattern a little bit um, from what the designer had, what Heather had put on, and that's because I used fingering weight. The pattern has for this to decrease down to 18 single crochets. Since I was using fingering weight yarn, 18 was going to make it way too small to make it as a usable bag. 
for what my purposes were. So I think I've got like 20 something is where I decreased that down to 27, 28, can't remember offhand, but either way, something along that line for that last round, um, it still closes up nicely. It still gives the whole aesthetic that we wanted for this particular pattern, but it is more usable. So there you go. So those are the ones that I made out of this book because I was so inspired with this, with all of the designs and the uniqueness. And I have um, all this scrap yarn, you know, yeah, I've got full balls of everything, but I have a lot of scrap yarn. So this was uh, a stash diving event to see what we could do and to come up with. The next one is the French fry dice bag. I have seen another YouTuber who made this. And if I can remember where it is, I will link that one down below. So you can go ahead and watch her video. And she describes how she made that. And it's so cute. I mean, a French fry dice bag. How cool is that? So again, if you don't want it as a dice bag, you're like, I don't have anyone gaming. I don't know. What size do you want it? Do you want it like my things right here? Fingering weight with a size C? Do you want to use sport weight? Do you want to use DK or worsted? How big do you want this? You can make any one of these and have that and kids playing with it, right? You know, just such fun stuff. It doesn't have to be patterns or suggestions. You don't have to use the same yarn that they have. It's either going to be bigger or smaller. Now, if you wanted to fit somebody, yeah, you might want to deal with gauge, but this doesn't have to fit. It doesn't have to be anything else. You go have fun with it. You know, I just ran out of time, kind of. I, I, I would normally make one with worsted and fingering and sport just because I could, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? All right. The next one is the frog dice bag. I'm surprised I didn't make that one. I, I, I am. I mean, I made four of them, right? You know, just working on it. So it is so cute. So on that one, you've got the big eyes and you've got safety eyes within the big eyes that are on the side of the head. And then the opening is the frog's mouth. So laying on its side. So it's a different look, a different aesthetic. So I thought that one was kind of cute. Maybe that one um, isn't the same with the animagrumi heads like the dragon is where the opening is on the neck. But you can do a lot with that on top of it. And the next uh, pattern in here is the Eye of Soren dice bag. Uh, so that one's a really neat one for the fantasy fans and things that are really more towards true. Uh, like for, for my stuff, personally, I have a lot of oranges. I think we've discussed this in some of the previous videos. I like oranges. I like flame colors. I have a lot of orange scraps. So on that one, if I were to do that, or if you look, right? So I have a lot of colors like this, as you can see on the bottom of that the um the little cereal bowl bag so you do something like that for the eye color you know so it gives more depth to it you know you're you're doing all the same stuff but you're making it look more than what it is you're making it look more like um you know how when you make something and someone's like what you made that no way you bought that in the store that that type of a thing that's what you're doing and you know how that makes you feel good that they're like they never guessed that you did that that's what that does with that color choices and stuff. So you could do that. You can add all sorts of things. Make it your own. Heather came up with the pattern. You can make the design yours. The next is a taco dice bag. I would have never thought of that. You know, so that one's neat. So she's got the, the, the cream color and, you know, the pink and the blue on that. But I would go ahead and have fun with that. I've got some variegated and things along that line. Or speckle. Oh, you have speckle yarns? Do you think that taco shell would be good with the speckle yarn? I think so. Oh, you know, I think I have some. I got, I just got some Premier Dotty or something like that. Sleepy Time? I don't know. That would be really cool. It's a DK weight, so it would be bigger. But I think that would be fantastic. And little speckles, a little depth on it. Yeah. Okay. So, different ideas, right? Play with color. Have fun. Next one is the Sleepy Lion Dice Bag. So I thought that was really interesting. You look at it, it's got red, white, and blue hair. At least it looks like that to me. So that one, you know, I'm not think I don't get sleeping lion vibes on that. I get, um, since we're coming up on the 4th of July, maybe that patriotic with the hair on it. I don't get the lion feel. I, I'll get like a red, white, and blue Rastafarian. Maybe that's not the right name. Uh, something along that line. So that particular um, bag has uh, like a circular bottom and then you're growing up on the sides and uh, 
you, you've got the hair and everything on, on a drawstring. Okay. And, and you sew on a face, you know, whatever type of face that you want on that one. And they had a big mouth on it. So um, I would use for the lion, oh, what, me, orange? Never. Yes, I would use orange. Okay. The oranges, the yellows, the gold, something like that. Something that kind of matches my hair a little bit, you know, something like that. I would do something like that and just really rock those colors. Uh, this is a patriotic cre creature, creature in the pattern book. Mm -mm. You call it a lion, man. I'm going to rock those colors. The next one is the sensory cat on yarn ball dice bag. So that one's really neat. So you've got a stuffed cat and the yarn ball. That's, that's fun. That one's getting into the, that excitement. So um, on that one right there, because you've got that yarn ball, you have a lot of options. Do you, do you use a textured yarn with it? Uh, you know, there are so many fuzzy and fluffy yarns. Um, you can really have a lot of fun with that one for that. You've got nubby yarns, things along that line. Um, do you use a woolly, something that has that hearty, toothy texture feel? Uh, that one to me has a lot of fun. I really like that option. And then the cat, I she's got it as just the the um, the red color cat with the black tips. I like that. So it's not all one color. I like the uniqueness on that. So that one's kind of a neat one. Um, if you're using scrap yarns, uh, do you make one ear one color, one ear another color? Do you turn it into a tabby cat? I mean, there's a lot of options on that. I'm pretty sure you can use that stuffed cat for a different pattern or for different things that you want to do. Um, the next one is the possum dice bag. So here she had fun with the different yarns, you know, the, the fuzzy yarn yarns. Um, uh, I don't know if that's it because I didn't look at the yarn type on this one, but like a latte cake, it has that fuzziness to it or red heart brushed. It'll have that little bit hair like um, or any type of um, your specialty yarns, your fur yarns, your, your things like that to just really have fun um, to, to create a sensory feel to it but um, making it unique. So there's a lot of options. So that one's, that one's pretty neat too. So the next one is the Medusa pattern, right? The Medusa uh, dice bag. She had a lot of fun with this one with the blue face and then the different colors. You got the snakes down with the green. I like that. And then the spirals with the different colors with the purple and the red, that's pretty neat. And the, um, the eyebrows going down like that, right? You know, so you've got the, the angled down eyebrows to make it look really really mean. That's pretty, ooh, that looks funny. Shouldn't, probably shouldn't do that. Doing that with the um, eyes along that color. I have some really interesting safety eyes. I have hazel safety eyes that I got at Joann's. They're a Joann's proprietary. You can look back at one of my previous uh, videos and I show that. But the one with that I did the reverb, um, reverb yarn review. Yeah. So I, I show those eyes. So you can get safety eyes beyond just the black or the different colors. So Joann's has some in stock. You can also go online, either Amazon or something along that line and find some different things that I think would be fun here. They, there's snake eyes, there's round eyes. They've got things with the glitter on the back, lots of choices. And I think this particular bag, you could really have a lot of fun putting on different eyeballs. That to me is cool. But I like all the different unique things that she has added to this particular bag. The following one is the eight ball bag. So that's the typical black bag, circle in the center, has the eight uh, embroidered on, however you want to embroider on. Um, so that one's pretty neat. I could also see following this particular pattern and putting like a wick out of it, since it is a black bag, and that, that then that would represent a bomb, right? You know, so you have different things that you can do with the same information, the same bag, the same um, product. So just different uses as far as that's concerned. The following one is baby dragon hatching from an egg dice bag. So you've got the little critters on that. And that one to me, I thought was really neat with the tail and the little dragon and the eggs. That's, that could be a lot of fun with your colors. You can have a, a blast putting all the different colors on that. Um, I ran out of time a little bit more. I didn't really run out of time, but I wanted to get this video out. I wanted to show this, but I was looking at uh, my different stashes and stuff. Like, look at these. Okay. Look at that. Now, this is a fantastic, gorgeous, bright pink and purple. I thought that would be really cool doing 
um, with a dragon tail along that line and then I've got this purple that could go with it so you know adding some things like that just some fire colors and I've got lots of sparkle I love sparkle and you can add those types of things and have a blast. And you can see that's just leftovers. That's just a, a partial ball. I already made a project with that, but it was too pretty to get rid of. And there's way too much of it to get rid of it. But you can do things like that. Have fun. So that's just a blast. Now, the tree boy. You know, this, this is straight up Groot. I know for, you know, whatever reasons you don't want, you know, the big companies coming after you can't say that. But that is so cute make it and stuff it make it and stuff it and give it to the person who just can't handle it and they have to have one you know galaxy of the whatever you know you know what i'm getting at but make one of those fantastic she did a great job with that design that is wonderful so i am groot right that is that is that is it you know it's called tree boy dice bag we know what it is sock monkey dice bag that is so adorable a sock monkey that is perfect so you got the typical beige sock monkey i have some wool yarn that's literally named sock monkey color it's a tweed with the the gray and the white stripe and i've got some red so i could do that and keep it to the same colors you've got your typical this one's the beige with the white and the red they've got the tweed with the gray that you can do with the white and the red it depends on what type of sock monkey if you want it those exact colors but i have that in a worsted weight and that would make a larger bag so you could either, again, turn this into a stuffed animal. You've already got the head. Just add a bigger tube for the body, right? And put some long tubes on it for the arms. Kind of like this guy, right? You could do that. So you're, you've are you got the head for that particular sock monkey is the bag. This is just a big long tube. I do have a pattern for this. I bought it in a book. You know, tubes for the arms, tube for the legs. This isn't it. Same concept. You could do it. There's so many options. The next bag is the beehive dice bag. I believe this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one in there. And I'm surprised I didn't make that one because, you know, I kind of have a thing for the bees. This is my coffee cup. Yes, I drink coffee throughout the day, but which is why I talk so fast. But this one's absolutely adorable. You start off with a cute little simplistic black bag. You're adding the embellishments. You have the, the yellow hive. You've got an adorable bee on there. I really like the bee. So take that, make some of those, put those on some hats that you're already knitting and crocheting, and you've got some embellishments that are great. Or you know what? I used to decorate my daughter's socks when she was little. Okay, so we didn't have a lot of money. It's a thing. So when, when she was littler and the, her pants were getting too short and, you know, we didn't have the money to necessarily go out and get her new pants, um, I would uh, crochet around her socks. I would add ruffles and I would add beads and I would do things like that, right? So then because the socks, were, the pants were a little bit short, you could see her socks folded over and you could see all the ruffles and everything else that I did in the embellishment. So, of course, it looked like it was done purposeful. So doing something like that, that's a fun project, by the way, doing something like that, you make some of these bees and you put those around the socks and stuff on your, you know, little kids designs. Um, that's cute. That'll be fun. And like you said, if the kids, the kids grow, pants get a little bit short. You can extend them for a week or two or a month, whatever. And yeah, that is, that is a tip and trick that I did with my daughter when she was younger. And she just thought it was adorable and cute and other kids wanted them. And, you know, I'm over here going, yeah, we don't have the money to get you new socks, but I, your new, new pants, but I can, I can embellish your socks and no one will know the difference. You know, be creative. That's all. Be creative. Have fun. So again, this book is um, uh, designed by Heather Heisler. She is a YouTuber. She goes by Strings and Threads. The book's name is Fantastic Fantasy Dice Bag Crochet Bags. There are 19 unique patterns in this book, and I have made four of them. I bought this book myself. Um, as of the recording, this book is $9.99 as the Kindle download on Amazon. You can get the physical copy. You can go out to Etsy and buy individual patterns if you choose. And I believe you could also go to Ravelry if you chose to. I don't know if she's got all of them on Ravelry. I know she's got some. She might not have all of them. So those are different places that you can get this particular book in these particular patterns. So let me know what you think. Which ones would you have made? I mean, 
I made 20% of the book. Obviously, I like the book. But which ones would you have made? I'm I'm thinking I should have made the B. I'm not going to lie. I should have I should have done the B and did that and followed those instructions. I got an affinity towards Bs. And I was looking at some of the other ones going, hmm, maybe I should do that. But I think overall, I followed four of the patterns. I've made five bags. Not bad. It's I consider this book definitely a win. I mean... How many of your books do you make multiple patterns of, or even one? I have a lot that are just inspiration. So uh, yeah, that's a win. All right, everybody. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching my video. Bye-bye. <laughs>